Hey everyone, so it's been a little while. There's a bit of question that keeps popping up in the Discord on how can you fix the Pico screen with Unreal Engine. So when you launch an application, it launches in a window. So if you see here, I'm casting from my Pico 4, I think it is Pico 4, to the PC. And if we launch a Unreal project, so I've got a build from the GDXR template. If I launch this, what happens is we get this window. We don't possess the character, we just can't do anything with it. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to set up your project. Once you've got Android and all that enabled, and you get to this point, how to fix this and set it up in a way that will allow you to build your application to the headset. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure in Fab that we have the Pico plugin. So if we search for Pico and then just hit the end there. What we're going to do is we want to make sure we've got the Pico OpenXR. We're not going to do the the XR plugin, that's for mixed reality stuff. So it's the same, depending on which one you go for, but for this one, I'm just gonna use the OpenXR. And we wanna make sure we've downloaded this for the engine version we're using. In my case, I'm gonna do 5.5. So it should work in every other version as well. And then what we can do is we can create a UE 5.5 version for the project, which we can then load onto the headset and we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna set up a straight up virtual reality project. I've already got a folder, and I'm gonna do this as YouTube tutorial. And then no starter content, just gonna keep it simple. We'll create it. And once you've installed the Pigo plugin to the engine, once the project starts up, you should be able to enable that in the plugin settings. So we'll do that straight away. So we'll go to plugins, and we'll go down to virtual reality. Uh, you see here, I've got the, the Pico OpenXR. We're gonna tick this. And then in the bottom right, just behind my camera, you'll see that says restart now. So we're just gonna hit that, and I'll do the same thing. I'll just boot it back up. And what we need to do next is modify some project settings and add a custom line to it. So it has the permissions that it needs to launch into OpenXR. So if we go to project settings, and we're gonna scroll down on the left-hand side here. We're going to go down to Android. I'm gonna make sure that my target SDK version is 29, because that is the version of Android that my headset's using. So if I go to uh, Device Manager, and we select this here, we see that if we hover over it, the operating system is Android 10, API level 29. I'm gonna assume that you've got this already set up if you know that the screen's not working properly. So should be able to build that fine. Now back in project settings, I'm just gonna do configure now. And in platforms Android, what I wanna do is gonna make sure the package game data inside APK is set to true. That'll be fine. And down here, oh, down here, we've got this section, which has a bunch of different information in it. The main one, package for MetaQuest devices, we want to untick this. We want to remove Oculus signature files from distribution APK, and hit true. What that will do is it will remove this line here for extra settings, and then it will add the extra settings for activity section for pp pvr.app type and so on. If you're a bit unsure, what you can do is you can actually copy this and you can paste this into the top row as well. So you've got both of them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure in our project, just to be safe, I'm gonna do file, save all. I'm actually gonna close it down. And then in there, just so it's a clean slate, we're gonna go back to the project. Here it is. And I'm gonna delete the build, derive data cache, intermediate and save files. So we delete that, we launch, YouTube Pico tutorial, so that's the project we were using. And once it's booted up, we should be able to go ahead to platforms, Android, and package project. There is a bunch of other options inside the project settings. So if we scroll right down, we have this section, Pico OpenXR, but you don't really need to change anything in here. I haven't touched any of it, but if you're not too sure about it, it's there. Pretty cool to have a look through. You might find some settings you could do with, changing the display rate and stuff, so sharpen settings and then display rates, some cool stuff. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a platform Android package build. I'm just gonna build this out. I've got a build folder already, so I'm just gonna use that. And this shouldn't take too long. Hopefully we don't get any errors. By clearing the intermediate and all that files, that should actually fix this for you. So it's a case of just waiting, and then once that's done, I'll be right back. Excellent, so that finished. What we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our project files, and then simply install it to the headset. Cool, so that's all done. What we're gonna find 
is I pressed the wrong button. Let's set up screen share again so you guys can see. There we go. So we can see the other project that I loaded up. If we go to library, we won't actually see it here. We want to go down to unknown now and then YouTube Pigo tutorial. So if I do open, we should actually boot up into the project as such. So the battery in my right controller is dead, which is why we can't see it. However, the left one does have a charge and we can't see our hands. So that's what we need to fix next. So it's actually super simple to do. All it is, is if we go back to project and we open up our, our template, blueprints, folder, and then VR horn. What we can do in here is we're gonna make sure, make sure that motion controller right grip is set to right. For the motion source and then motion controller left grip which is up here is set to left we're going to hit compile and save if we do this now we'll see that the motion controllers still don't track and the reason for that is we don't actually have any inputs so it turns out if the input mapping context has no inputs at all it won't look for the device and motion controller source won't be able to find it so if we go to default and in this case i'm just going to add the one uh, input I'm going to toggle left and then we can do the plus and in here I've got this Pico 4 controller. This is because I've used the plugin so it's actually in there and then I'm going to use grip axis for that one. So I do file save all and we close this. Now if I do another Android build and we say build project select all should be able to go through and then if we open up our folder for Android it really shouldn't take too long. I'm going to uninstall the other version. We'll give it just a second. And now that's built, we should be able to launch this back up. So install it to the headset. Go back to the screencast. Make sure it's installed. Go and there we are. And now if we load this one, we go open. What we should find is that we boot up and our controller is now tracked. We've got our button, it's a little bit wrong, but we can actually work through that and then go through. So the next step that you guys need to do from here, otherwise it's gonna be an incredibly long video and very tedious is to actually go in and remap all the inputs. So if you want to make this easier, there's this web page here, which I will link in the description for Pigo Unreal OpenXL plugin. And if you go down, what you'll find is, this isn't the correct one, input mappings. Here we go. So there's actually a graph here with a chart that shows you which inputs you need to put in there and then get that all working with the, the input mapping contexts for the project. So if you go through, you follow this, you should be good to go. And that's pretty much it. There's not much else to do after that. You build your project and kind of go for it. So yeah, until next time, I hope this helps and I'll see you then. If you need any help, head over to the Discord. And if you want to support the channel, we got, we've got got the Patreon and YouTube members as well, which really helps. So I'll throw that in there. But yeah, see you next time.